Probably one of the things that, uh, for me, still amazes me is that the extent of work that you've done as these painted photographs could have filled probably three galleries this size. I mean, uh, the, the depth of the work is, is really there. And uh, for me, it was hard to get it down to whatever right. it is, 70, maybe 70, 80 30, 30. images. Uh, mostly because there were so many others that, you know, I wanted to have there, but just right. limited in terms of space, so. Uh, but uh, this, it, actually, this panel. That is, wall is one I love. Yeah, it's, it's one of my favorites. Yeah. Um, absolutely extraordinary show. I really like it. And, of course, I'm a sucker for the work. Right. <laughs> <laughs> have been for a long time, so it's a yeah. real honor to be able to, uh, you know, have an opportunity to curate it. Yeah, and, uh, and it was really a treat for me to come and see it all, all done and all hung. Yeah, it's really nice to see your work out yeah. like that. And I think it's a, a befitting uh, tribute to you, too, as uh, this gallery, as, as you know, has been uh, continuously operating as a photographic gallery for more than 45 years exactly. now. Yeah. They've had shows of your grandfather's, yeah. of your uncle Brett, yeah. your father Cole, and yourself. I, I'm, I think you've had a couple of other shows yeah. here at the center, but... It uh, is kind of interesting when you started thinking of that, you know, and when the, it was started as the Friends of Photography, and, you know, it's still going to today. And also this work, of course, is, is is my painted stuff, but I'm also, the, you know, black and white photographer. Right, because yeah. this is uh, an aspect of your work that probably isn't as well known right. as, as your uh, black and white uh, work is. Yeah. I mean, and, and when you have someone like you to curate it, to me it's very special. First of all, it's someone that enjoys my work, a, a good friend of mine, someone I admire. A lot of people ask me, you know, did you have anything to do with the, the, the hanging of the show? And I said, no, it's not my job. I love to sit back and watch no. someone else do that because they bring a different light to it, you know, and the way you hung it in different sections of the show really made the strength of a lot of the work show. This uh, sort of topographical break from the pristine silver gelatin print surface uh, for a Weston is a huge leap yeah. uh, and I, I, to me it's one of the most remarkable things about this work is that uh, Kim has come from an extremely traditional and obviously well-renowned background of the, that pristine black and white silver gelatin print and to have moved here has really brought him uh, uh, out as a singularly uh, important artist, I think, and uh, it's not an easy, not an easy transition to make. Yeah. But I think his uh, Kim's honesty and his forthrightness in terms of his work uh, it really shows here, and is what it takes in order to make that break. It was such a challenge because growing up, both Hunter and I, in the world of that preciousness of the surface of black and white photography or even color, but to be able to go and actually attack the surface. The first time I did it was yeah. like, oh, you know, I can touch it, you know, without yeah. white gloves. You know? not to put your fingers yes, through it. <laughs> but I love that, you know, uh, that, yeah. that feeling. And of course you can see the build up of paint on it. And to me, that's, that's a huge part of the whole process. Well, uh, I think it was uh, mid 1980s, maybe, well, no, probably a little later. Yeah. Let's say the early 1990s uh, is when I first met Kim. Of course, I was familiar with his work uh, prior to that time, uh, but I didn't, we didn't know one another personally. So uh, I do have a story that I think is kind of entertaining. The first time I ever uh, went to Kim and Gina's home for dinner, they invited us down, and Kim went out on the rocks and collected a bunch of mussels which uh, they boiled up. It was a delicious meal. We had, uh, they had spread newspaper all over the table and uh, served up mussels and French bread with lots of butter and kind of ate with our hands and spoons and pretty greasy, you know, all over. And at, at the conclusion of the meal, without the table being cleared, Kim got up and he went into Edward's old darkroom and he pulled out the pepper number 30, negative. 
This is arguably the most famous <laughs> and uh, renowned photographic black and white negative that's ever been made. He took it out of the sleeve, sat down at the table and said, hey, check this out, and he handed it to me. And I just went like this. And, I can't touch that. And he, and he said, you know, it's just a negative. It's not worth anything, which is not really true, but uh, I was just flabbergasted by the fact that uh, he would have, you know, gone to the uh, gone to the trouble of pulling out. Uh, and I, I had him hold it and I inspected it. It was really a revelation to see the negative. You know, I mean, if you think about it, it's probably the most famous photograph that's ever been made. And to be able to see the actual negative, it was a real treat. And so, not, not drop it in. <laughs> yeah. Well, I just wasn't going to have any part of that. <laughs> Big greasy fingerprints. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, and I think we've been uh, great friends ever <laughs> since. Not really. Uh, I never really went out to photograph uh, with the idea of, of painting it afterwards. How it sort of worked was I just went through the archives of work that I had done and picked out certain images that worked for me and would work as a painting uh, to be able to paint on. There was only one series that I did in this show that I actually said, okay, I'm going to get my camera, I'm going to go out, and I'm going to photograph knowing that I'm going to paint it. And it's just a couple of images on the wall over there, but normally, no, it's just... Uh, I don't, I'm not really conscious of, of that, you know, I'm just going, when I'm photographing, I'm photographing. If I, when I'm painting, I'm painting. And if an if a image works as a painted image, that's fine. If it doesn't, that's okay. So, so you're still, you're, you're still uh, directed toward the black and white yeah, work? Yeah, absolutely. To begin with. And yeah, and it's yeah. funny because I was thinking, you know, what is this? What is this painted photograph? And actually, it's just to me, it's another layer of the story. A lot of my work is, is sort of story driven and to me, um, you know, why paint on it? Well, as I'm painting on it, it's me almost finishing the story that I started off with in black and white. Yeah. Well, uh, essentially it was to go down to Kim's studio and uh, be absolutely overwhelmed with the amount of work. I mean. He has hundreds and hundreds of these painted photographs. Uh, I think you said you'd been doing it for 10 years, so uh, extremely prolific. There's a lot of work. And so just trying to narrow that down to maybe a hundred images uh, was a process that we both went through. We kind of looked at each piece and we said yay or nay. Um, and uh, basically ended up with two piles. Uh, and then from there, I took the... Uh, digital image files of, of, the, of each of the hundred images that we uh, picked out as possibilities. And uh, essentially what I did was put it into um, a program in the computer that allowed me to see small JPEGs of each of the images in order to arrange them and group them. Uh, and I did that on a, a uh, actually a model of the walls themselves. So everything used to scale and I was able to kind of set up the show on the computer made it much easier to arrange rather than bringing all the work down, setting it on the floor and then kind of moving things around. And once we agreed that you know, the 72 images were good to go, uh, then it was a matter of you know, looking at the images in different sequences to see how they uh, were, would affect you walking around the gallery and from different viewpoints. Uh, once we had the first 100, I think it was pretty easy. I mean, to me, it's very important what image is next to what other image and at the same time trying to split up the work because there are so many different facets to the work trying to um, gather those facets together to kind of accent the groups of pictures as well as the individual images.